Welcome to Conscious Crypto. I'm going to bring you up to date on 16 years of price action in five minutes. In order to do that, you must understand the basics of Bitcoin. There's a Bitcoin, the network, and then there is Bitcoins, which refer to the digital currency units native to the Bitcoin network. Now, to understand these price action theories, you must understand that Bitcoin works in four-year cycles. Why? Because every 210,000 blocks, the supply is reduced by half. That is roughly three years, 10 months. We round up to four years, call it the four-year cycle. The last halving of supply was April 2024, and it went from 6.25 Bitcoins per block to 3.125 Bitcoins per block. So again, all you have to know is that about every four years, the supply is reduced by half. Going in to the charts, we're going to start first with Bob Lucas, who pioneered the four-year cycles. He was a position trader, is a position trader of 30 years, focusing on market cycles. He didn't he identified one in Bitcoin. Bob Lucas noticed that Bitcoin would bottom roughly 45 months from the last bottom. So here's the starting. This is 45 bars in months, 45 months, okay? Now this was also a bottom and he started to notice that the tops began to come about 35 months away from the bottoms. So from here to here, 35. Again, now he's noticing, all right, from this bottom to here, 47 and so on and so forth. Another 35 to the double top here in 2021, and then 47 bars to the bottom from the last Bitcoin bottom. And that is how he extrapolates to believe that the price of Bitcoin could be top roughly in October of 2025. Now that we understand this, we understand that this is all based on the halvings. So after the first halving, price begins to go parabolic. After the second halving, price begins to go parabolic. After the third halving, price begins to go parabolic. We are expecting something as to the same here. Next, I will introduce the stock to flow model by Plan B. Plan B released this in 2017. Now, stock to flow is a model that is used for other commodities like gold. Since Bitcoin is seen as digital gold, it certainly has relevance. Here is the updated Bitcoin stock to flow model. Now, stock to flow for Bitcoin is a quantitative model that compares the existing stock of Bitcoins to the flow of new Bitcoins entering circulation each year. Again, as miners mine blocks, they get rewarded in Bitcoins. That is new supply flowing into the market. The model calculates the stock to flow ratio by dividing the total supply of Bitcoins by the annual production of new Bitcoins. So the S to F ratio is used as a measure of scarcity with higher ratios indicating higher scarcity. According to the S2F model, assets with higher scarcity tend to have higher value over time. So, in the case of Bitcoin, the model suggests that as the rate of new Bitcoin production decreases due to the halvening, the scarcity of Bitcoin increases, potentially leading to higher prices in the future. Here on this chart, you see the colors are coded such that the closer you are to the halvening, the closer we get from to blue, dark blue specifically. Then as we have the halvening, we then start again at red and we see that red and orange as we're approaching the next halvening in the next four years begins to show this parabolic run up. Of course, as it begins to turn to green, we see a bear market in preparation for the next halvening turning blue. Once blue hits to red, that is the halving. That is when Bitcoin halves. And we again see the red to yellow parabolic run up. So this stock to flow ratio is charted in the orange line. And this is where we assume price would go. Now we are below. And this is why after the 2020 through 2021 bull market, we started to get confused because there was a double top. There was a bit of a reset and the stock to flow model started to prove inaccurate as it strayed away from the increasing price of Bitcoin, which you see here on the left. Next, we're talking about super cycles. Now, Lark Davis has a phenomenal video on super cycles, and he explains it very clearly in relation to the Apple super cycle. So as you can see here, after the dot com crash in 2000, Apple bottomed out and then from its low of 25 cents has essentially only seen upside with a minor drawback 
of 60%. Now it looks minor here. It might've felt massive to holders of Apple or buyers at seven when it dropped to three and they lost half their value. However, as you can see, it has gone essentially only up over time and the drawdowns have become less and less 47 31 41 instead of a monumental 60 you know 57 to 60 percent crash it has seen less and less and has trended steadily upwards the narrative here could be applied to bitcoin where we begin to see the same thing of the volatility begins to decrease as mass adoption increases. And that's what happened with Apple is if you think about it, right? Everyone has an iPhone. I'm making this off a MacBook Pro. The smartphone revolution and the mass adoption of technology has showed you that it's much harder for this stock, this company to be devalued. It is always valuable. And that is the same notion that we apply to Bitcoin, that as more people begin to buy and hold Bitcoin, use the Bitcoin network, that ultimately this is going to simply trend upwards and reduce the volatility, creating a perpetual upcycle. Benjamin Cowan has done a study on all of these things, especially diminishing returns, something he speaks about often. You can see here one of his latest videos is all about ROIs or return on investment after the halving. Now to express the concept of diminishing returns, I'm going to Steve Courtney at Crypto Crew University. Now he highlights diminishing returns by drawing out these price scales and showing the percentage gains in each bull market. Notice how the numbers decrease. For the second time, I'll start here. By dividing the percentage gains by 5.3, he noticed that it roughly equaled the percentage gains in the next cycle. So by dividing this final number, by 5.3, he estimates that we'll see a 410% return from the bottoms here, which is roughly $77,000. Now that would confirm a triple top or simply a massive double top. Now between Camel Finance, Bob Lucas, even Lark Davis, they have all spoken about a left translated cycle. What a left translated cycle simply means is that the top would come early to give credence to the idea of an early top or the fact that our cycle is ahead of schedule, we can look at the prior cycles. This one took 40 months to break the all-time high. This one took 35 months to break the all-time high, doing so in 2020. And the current cycle that we're in broke the all-time high in 28 months. Now, the way that Camel likes to highlight this, I'll go from this last time we broke all-time high to the next all time high. He copy pastes, he puts it here and goes, here's our trajectory, boom, 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 up. Camel Finance truly believes that there is a ton of upside and that our cycle top will come early, for example, in January of 2025, rather than October of 2025, which is more in line with Bob Lucas's four year cycle narrative that we spoke of in the beginning. Finally, we will follow up on Bob Lucas's all three scenarios. Now, Bob Lucas just theorized that he sees three scenarios from the current price action. And prior to, he had drawn this on June 17th. Now, we are currently playing out both scenarios with a potential bounce forming here. And then we're off to the races. Or... We do come back up again, only to get rejected, make another bottom, then find our way out of that. He also has noted that we could potentially decline into a bear market from here. Now, what's also worth noting is that Bob Lucas said we could very well fake bounce here, clear here, and actually sweep down to about $50,000 before seeing our right translated cycle. I also share the notion that this would not invalidate the bull market, however, it would scare a lot of people out of their positions, freeing up Bitcoin to be bought by stronger market participants. Now, both of these narratives is actually supported by others, including CTO Larson on Invest Answers podcast, that what we have here is strong support and a potential inverse head and shoulders pattern. Boom, boom. This is the head. These are the shoulders. 
and this would be the takeoff. Now that's also what I noticed within another head and shoulders, an inverse head and shoulders. However, that did not play out. We don't know what's going to happen next. Nobody knows. As soon as you think you know, you begin to delete information from your view. Cognitive bias enters and you get pigeonholed into one perspective, eliminating information, narrowing your macro view. Tunnel vision can hurt your portfolio. So my friends, we must remain open to the possibilities and decide for yourself, what is the greater pain? To phrase that simply, if you sold here at 70K, would it hurt if Bitcoin went to 100K without you? Now, if you sold at 70K, what if it went to $350,000 without you? Now, this is where Bob Lucas's approach holds water. He's all about timing the bottom. So all that you have is upside, not timing it perfectly, but well enough to where, again, as he entered here and here, he got to see only upside, which has allowed him in the past to weather sideways chop like we're seeing now and allow Bitcoin to truly reach price discovery mode. That is all y'all. I put a lot of effort into this. I would hope for a like, subscribe if you got it. Conscious crypto. What's the point of making major gains if you lose yourself in the process?